how to make it full. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, all right. <laughs> there we go. So uh, let's see. Just let me press on a button or so here. Just a second. Do, 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 hold on. Where is my timer? So much. Cancel three minutes. Okay. Um, and actually, let me just put this here. This is uh, for the camera. Good to go there, Tom. All right, we're rolling. Uh, hi, my name's uh, Eileen King. I'm a first year student here at UR. Um, I'm also trying to figure my out, figure my way out into UR, just as all of you are. Um, ever since I was young, I've been part of a lot of different activities, and because of that, I was exposed to different group dynamics and different positions. Uh, for example, I was in a chamber music group where the goal was to work together to provide an audience with the music with the best of our abilities. Uh, I was also in Science Olympiad where the goal was to work together to create a science project and win the competition. And there were also those regular high school group projects where we were assigned, uh, we, we were, our goal was to complete an assignment and get a, get a good grade. And because of, diff uh, because of these different groups and different people of different characteristics, I was able to successfully navigate through these groups and reach our respective final goal. Uh, in my opinion, a team leader should be firstly a creator, a producer that is, that is responsible for the project scope and overall team goals of the whole project. Secondly, a mediator, a balancer of wants and needs between the team members or the client. Thirdly, an adaptive, responsive team member. Although the team leader may be accountable for the overall decisions of the group, I firmly believe that there's no hierarchy within the team. It is important that everyone works together as a cohesive collaborative unit, and my job is merely to connect everyone and work creatively and efficiently as possible. As I said before, I have experienced many different activities, and I have been part of diverse things here at I currently work at the Strong Hospital in the Academic Information Technology se section as an IT assistant. I am part of Rock Hat Club, which works with different tech projects throughout the semester. And through my classes and my past experiences, I'm familiar with two program lang pro programming languages, including Java and C++, a uh, few, few Adobe Creative Suites, including but not limited to Premiere Pro, Illustrator, Lightroom, and Photoshop. And I'm also versed in AutoCAD, Blender, and different types of online platform dealing with creating something. Although I might not be fully qualified, because of my ability to adapt, problem solve, and help others, I dare say that I have a potential to become a trustworthy team leader. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Alandra Blackmore. Let's see, what? I think I have yours, right? Oops, let's see. And, oh yeah, that one. Thank you for re reducing no the images. Yeah, sorry about that problem, that yeah. issue. Yeah, uh, oh, there we go, I know. Yeah, right. I usually know these things. <laughs> All right, and go, go, All right. go. Hello everyone, my name is Ali, and I'm here to promote here myself as yet another potential visual interface designer. Um, so I understand that a visual designer must understand a brand's image or aesthetic and create a design that aligns with that image. I also understand that that image or that design has to be created from primarily abstract concepts or notes developed by the rest of the team. And the design has to be created with a thorough and sufficient knowledge of color, typeset, and layout. So I believe I have to the challenge of this role. I have taken DMS 103, and if any of you have taken that class, you know that it's pretty much a crash course in industry standard programs. So I'm really comfortable using Adobe Creative Suite, like Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects. I've also taken summer courses in digital art, so I'm also comfortable with 3D programs like Maya and Blender. And I've been working with these programs for several years, so I'm really comfortable creating digital content and digital art. And I'm also really comfortable with troubleshooting problems. I'm comfortable figuring out what I don't know. Because with any digital program, there's always going to be something you don't really know how to do. And, but more importantly, though, I'm very curious about the relationship that a person's preferences and experiences play together. For example, if a person has been browsing, say, YouTube and Facebook for most of their time on the internet, 
how does their experience with those websites inform what their preferences are when browsing new websites? Same thing goes for a person's app library. How do their current experiences with apps, do they use Snapchat, do they use like New York Times app? How does that inform what they want to see when they're browsing new apps? I believe understanding this relationship can help you better create designs that, are, that stand out more and are more innovative than everything else that's out there. For these reasons, I believe I would be a good candidate for a visual interface designer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Alicia Tavit. John? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. How's it going? <laughs> Towards that direction. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we'll actually do the clip on thing. Yeah. So, is it there or can you see? It's in that folder. Actually, close that. So, is it. Did you send it to me earlier? I sent it to you just now. Oh, that is. Okay. So I don't know if we can clip this on because we're having audio problems. Audio problems. <laughs> audio problem. I don't know. <laughs> maybe drop it in your pocket or something, or maybe just hold on there with it. It's not too distracting. Yeah. Hello. Testing one, yeah. two. Is no, it working? I won't hear anything, but, uh, oh, I won't hear anything, but it will. Okay, cool. Can you hear? Okay. Can you hear me? Awesome. All right, anytime you're ready. Cool. Hit it. So, hi, I'm Alicia, and I believe that I would be best uh, suited for the team role of synthesizer. I've outlined the requirements that I believe are most important for the synthesizer role and my experiences that make me qualified for it. So the first two and the two that I believe are most important are the ability to distill ideas and provide clarity and effectiveness for the group. This is to ensure that the team stays on track and we get all the details out of the design product. Um, I have several skills in organization at home. I'm the head of board for several nonprofits in my community, which means that I work with members of the community and members of the nonprofit and as, lo as well as local businesses in order to come together and create events that members of the community can come to and learn about these different nonprofits. Um, I have a lot of communication um, skills because of this because I'm kind of the one that emails everyone and make sure that we are all together and on the same page with what we're doing. So this uh, big level organization skills I have can help me to organize small groups as well. Uh, next is the ability to simpli simplify complex domains. This just means to take big concepts and make them simpler for people that are not the tech people of the group but to give to the client or to help us all move along. Um, I have a lot of experience tutoring, specifically in maths. So because I teach all programs, I've definitely gained skills in taking concepts and making them simpler so students can understand what is going on because it's essentially important that we understand why we do things instead of just knowing the formula to keep it going. Um, next, technical knowledge. I'm proficient in several programs, uh, Microsoft Excel kind of things or other Microsoft programs like Word presentations, slides, all those things as well as more specific design-oriented programs such as Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, and lastly, what's important for the role of synthesizer is a general curiosity on how things work. Um, I'm always looking for new things and I am definitely the kind of person that goes and tries to figure out stuff and troubleshoot stuff when we run into issues. So I'm definitely not a just go by the book kind of person and that would make me a good candidate for a synthesizer. Oh, Thank you. All right, very good, thanks. Next, yep. Actually, is uh, Pooja, uh, Pooja uh, Priya here? No, oh, she's here, but not here. Okay, so yeah, moving on to Tori. And oh yeah, don't walk away with that. Yeah. Um, Can you plug this in? Oh yeah, okay. Or do you um, get it over there? It's just that that's uh, yeah. why. Yeah, why don't you boot that up? I'm going to go on to the next one. Okay, so, uh, let's see, six. Uh, Hoya Lee. Yeah, come on up. Oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? Hi, pretty fine. <laughs> uh, uh, 
couple things real quick. I realized, you know, uh, so if you use fonts on your computer, uh, just to, in your slides, uh, and then send it to me, it doesn't look the same because I probably don't have the same special fonts that you do. So that, that's sometimes a problem. But uh, anyway, good to go? Okay. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Howie Ali, and if you find my Chinese name is pretty hard to pronounce, you can just call me Jack. Yeah. And uh, I think many of you may have faced the same dilemma as I faced at first to choose whether I am an uh, interaction designer generator or an uh, interface uh, synthesizer yeah. or what role I am. Uh, personally, I would like to become an industrial builder, but uh, the last time I built a website was like two years ago, so I <laughs> decided not to choose that role. And why I think I can interaction generators. Uh, first, uh, I'm very familiar with the system behavior and I think I can be pretty um, fine to say how I feel about the system behavior because I have already built a website like that uh, and I, made, uh, I need to make clear that this is not my personal style. I like to make the website more clear and more arrangement but this website is for parents and you know Parents are always like, they like stuff to for website. So that website is kind of weird <laughs> for me. And also interaction generators should uh, be more focused on human factors. Um, and, sec uh, and third, uh, to be very familiar with sketching ideas on a blackboard. And fourth, uh, to be very familiar with visual and industrial uh, systems. And the most important point I think here is to have a collaboration with other role in the team. Uh, because uh, an interactional, uh, interaction designer generator should uh, like, uh, it, mm, work with the whole team during the whole time. And they need to be very familiar with the system behavior. So collaboration is really important. And the last thing uh, I think I have is imaginations. Because I, have, I think I'm kind of uh, people who like to uh, daydream, so uh, I can make the website more interesting and uh, to be more comfortable for using, and that's all. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, hold on a second. Let me press a couple buttons. Tori, whenever you're ready. Get your on. Ready to go? It wasn't, but now I'm not sure how to get my USB drive in, so I'm hoping to try to move it today. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's see, seven. Uh, Susanna Flores. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I think I remember. Let's see. I think you'll be able to find it. Let me just close that. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, you can fire it up there. Oh, yeah, the audio. Um, and also, then, if you could like grab the microphone there, clip it on something. Okay. And okay. And uh, sorry, if that's distracting, <laughs> but you know, maybe you pocket that or just, or just don't, okay, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't move too far. So hi, I'm Susanna, and the role that I chose was if, of a visual designer. So a lot of the process of designing requires collaboration between all of the group members, but there are, there are certain responsibilities that each, each one has. So for a visual designer, one of the main goals is to design a product or service that not only maximizes usability, but is also desirable to the public. So that means creating a good first impression for the certain product through visuals while also making the purpose clear. Um, uh, the visual designer is also involved in interviews in which they must have detailed knowledge of the design concepts to effectively communicate the data and why they made certain decisions. 
Um, this knowledge is also useful in being to able to spot out any flaws in the system that they may have and to be able to communicate all the requirements. They must have knowledge on their targeted audiences they need to be able to civilly reach agreements with team members and they need to be able to create a visual system including the color typography icons that are pleasing and that complement the purpose of the product. Um, in general, the visuals of a product are the first thing a user will notice. So a if a visual designer does their job properly, they will not only increase desirability but also improve the user's experience in the, in the process. Um, and some of the qualifications that I have, um, some courses that I've taken are DMS 101, which was just an intro to digital media, and DMS 103, um, in which I received uh, introductions to photography, video production, graphic design, 3D design, and I was able to get hands-on um, experience using uh, software like Photoshop, Illustrator, Blender. Um, uh, some uh, good um, characteristics that I think I have are that I am pretty organized, I am detail oriented, and I am a visual learner, so I like to visualize things in my head before I actually do anything. Um, I also have good experience with the software, and I took four years of studio arts in high school, and that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a way to plug it in here? Uh, yeah, here? right on uh, the front there. Oh, yes. Because I don't know what's up with that, yeah. but I really hope it's not my drive of finally giving out. Okay. Mm, come on. So it will pop up on the desktop eventually. Mm. Mm, it's not recognizing it. Um, well, well, uh, hmm. I almost recognize something. Well, you, you can go without. Yeah, OK. okay. So I so had a slide, but apparently I don't right now. Um, hi, I am Tori. I am a, oh, sorry, I need to do this. That's OK, just do it since you're sitting right there. Uh, I'm Tori. I am a transfer student um, who is focusing in DMS and math. Um, I chose to present on the Visual Interface and Information Designer, shortened to VISD, uh, which is not the same as graphic design, which would be you know, static on a page instead of being interactive on a web page or application. Um, but they both require the same basic building box, color, type, layout, you know, the aspects that create a visual space for elements to occupy and be understood within. Unlike graphic design, uh, visual design heavily relies on the application of information design to guide dynamic user experience necessary in digital products. Visual interface designers must also be able to create a visually appealing product within a uh, more flexible constraints than you have with print design, such as you know, low image resolutions and having uh, images that don't uh, like become really funky as you're moving through space. Um, so you have to create a visually refined interfaces while championing functionality and usability. Uh, on that note, the design should actually inform the behavior of the product or aspect within. The visual design should intuitively guide users on what to expect from the product. I believe myself to be best suited to this role, the role of visual interface and information, information designer, because I have a strong background in uh, graphic design basics and an intuitive understanding of visual design principles. I, generally have a good eye for static design, which then aids in uh, creating dynamic digital design. Um, just to say, I have experience designing event posters, business cards, t-shirts, logos, et cetera. I've been making business cards for family members for about a decade and have used uh, a variety of tools from Microsoft Paint back you know, five or six years ago when it was did not have the functionality that it currently has, and random internet tools to Adobe Photoshop, um, and more professional um, tools like that, and uh, have a lot of flexibility with being able to adapt various um, digital tools to make them do what I need them to do. 
Uh, I'm also highly attuned to the accessibility of design with regards to typography, contrast, and general usability. Um, that's something that being disabled, I have become you know, especially attuned to. That's something that a lot of people overlook and I think is very important, especially when you have dynamic um, interfaces, you know, like websites, et cetera. You need to be able to actually understand what's happening when you're using it and um, understand what the user is going to be feeling going through it. Um, with regards to digital design specifically, I've taken both CSC 170 and 174 and therefore I have experience with web design. Um, and coming into this course with those skills plus the ability to visualize dynamic systems lead me to believe I am currently best suited to the team role of Should I send you my PowerPoint at some point? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. I All right. Uh, let's see, next, uh, let's see, Alexis Ross. Oh, hello. Oh my god. Apparently you should not use <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And she will fire it right up and go into a present okay. mode there. And uh, then if you could grab the mic yeah. cool. when you're ready. Great. Yeah, do you want me to wear it or just hold it? Uh, you can walk around with it just or okay. if it's not too distracting. No, this is fine. I'm very used to microphones. Uh, hi, my name is Alexis Ross. I'm the 3,472nd visual designer who's presented in this class. Um, so, yeah. Uh, being a visual designer, we've already talked about this like 30 times, it's about being able to design usable and workable interfaces, taking the things that the, like, the design generators are giving you and putting them together and making it something that a user, a like, consumer, whatever you want to call the uh, end of the process, be able to use it. Because if you come up with something cool and it's just completely not understandable and usable, uh, literally whatever, you wasted your time. Uh, so I have a like, pretty kind of deep history with varying forms of design. I've done traditional art, uh, sprite design, and modification. If you're not familiar with sprites, uh, sprites are essentially extremely low pixel count art where you can like, see the squares. Um, so I've done a lot with that. Uh, I do broadcast live streaming. I stream games on Twitch. Um, and I do a lot of event production staff work, again, for different streams. I've worked with a lot of different technical setups and a ton of different like, artistic layouts. And I have a pretty deep knowledge of analog video processing. Um, so a summary of my visual design skills. Um, I am very good with Photoshop. I've been using it for a lot of years. Uh, I mentioned sprite work. I've done photo editing. Um, I'm not the strongest like digital drawer, but like if you give me an image, I can manipulate and I can create from nothing using the tools in Photoshop. Um, I can do design in ink and pencil. Uh, you know, sketch out an interface and then try and port it to a website or whatever. Um, uh, analog video quality improvement. As I mentioned, I am very familiar with uh, analog video. Uh, this thing that I put a picture of here, it's called an open source scan converter. It's a really niche, rather expensive device that upscales video laglessly, and it's the sort of thing that I spend my life messing around with. Some call it a waste of time. I don't. Um, I have a good sense for broadcast layout design. I've worked for events ranging from things that spend a week and raise $2 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation to things that raise a couple hundred over the course of a weekend run by four people. Um, I've worked with a lot of different events, a lot of different layouts, so I have a really good sense of broadcast layout design. And I think one skill that I have that I haven't heard a lot of people mention, I know when to stop pre pretending to know that I know how to do things, and I know how to work with graphic designers who are better than me. As a broadcaster, I've paid a lot of people to make me pretty things. And I know how to like, take something and give feedback so that we can effectively work towards making it better, which is an essential skill in a team, but especially as a designer. That's all. Oh, there you go. Thanks. Good job. All right. Um, thank you. Let's see, where do I leave off? I'm Danielle Marcel. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry? Um, I emailed it to uh, you. Recently? Yes. Okay, let's see. give it a kick. If not, I can always plug in there. Oops. Or maybe, uh... nope, not showing up. Can I use uh, the HDMI keyboard? Yeah, okay, I'll uh, come back to you. Yeah, but boot that up um, and get that going. So let's see. Vanessa, Ben? Vanessa? Do you have here, or do you have? Okay. Uh, let's see. Is it uh, HDMI or? HDMI. 
Okay, just pop that out. There you go. as a fan and I'd like to post myself to be a interaction designer specifically in the generator position. The duties involved of the generator include leading the visual sorry. Uh, Actually um, can you put that? Sure. And don't go too far or carry that. Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, so yeah so duties involved in the generator position mean leading the visualization of system behavior utilizing feedback and your own knowledge to direct the project and to articulate designs in visual terms. So I, in terms of skills, I am the president of PAWS and I was a TA for a biology class which gives me several leadership experiences in terms of direct project management, event management, and also in just generally leading discussions within large groups of people. In terms of communication, I am a medic assistant for MER and a, as part of the executive board for PAWS. It means I have a lot of experience working in teams and in terms of delivering the goal in the best manner possible. Especially with PAWS, I understand the importance of getting feedback from both the other club members or team members and from the directed audience. So I think that would especially be useful in terms of utilizing feedback to direct the project itself. I also am skilled in terms of visual art, in terms of tra traditional media, so although uh, this is I'm not as inclined graphically in terms of using other forms. I believe that it's especially useful in terms of sketching out initial designs for the project with the visual designer in the initial stages of the project as well as helping along the process in terms of visual man direction of the visual management. I also have experience designing club merchandise for my so that includes stickers, posters, and um, t-shirt designs. So, uh, while I do not have any formal training, I do have a lot of practical experiences here. Um, and that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, I'm Danny Marcella, and I think I would best be suited for a, a visual designer role. Um, as a whole, visual designers are responsible for providing effective visual communication beyond the design team to potential audiences and customers. Uh, once the entire group has decided what works well for them in their plan, the visual designer must decide if these ideas within this one specific group can be translated well into a broader range of people. Um, visual designers need to be introspective and for how an audience may respond to their artistic and visual choices. They are responsible for making sure these ideas on paper not only work well for the purpose and overall function, but how these factors will translate digitally. Um, this is the beginning of bringing the product to a physical life. Uh, the work done by the visual designer should mimic what the product is going to be like and how it will behave when it's in use. Um, visual designers are constantly working towards an optimal user experience and check for any inconsistencies within the model. Uh, while the visual designer's role is not solely art related, it's important to understand how different elements of art either clash or blend together, uh, such as color schemes and website layouts. Um, essentially, the visual designer becomes its own marketing department and their involvement decides what looks and operates the best. Um, they are in charge of interviews, uh, pitching potential ideas to investors, and creating a convincing and influential impression for clients. Um, those who take on the visual designer role understand the importance of interface and how people interact with different elements and icons within design. Uh, so as for myself, I am a sophomore double majoring in digital media and studio art with a concentration in photography. Um, I think this role would be best for me because I enjoy problem solving uh, to find maximum usability for users. I like the idea of using client data to figure out which interface would best fit the customer and visual design of a product. 
Um, selecting proper interface is something that we don't usually think about all the time, but it's really crucial for the product to be understood. Um, most importantly, it can get people very interested in what we're trying to sell. So as for my experience, I've created uh, graphic design like pieces of art through photography and editing software, and I work closely with the creative director at WRUR. Um, I know how to place items within design to create an appealing clean piece, and I pay a lot of attention to detail, and I would be able to create a positive impression for our audience. Um, I also have experience in Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere Pro. Um, I'm also currently the teacher assistant for DMS 101, and I think that this role will help me build leadership skills, which can be used for our group. Okay. Um, as I continue to study photography and digital media, um, I know that this can help me perfect effective composition for pieces to evoke emotions and essential information effectively. Thank you. For my initial design role, I have chosen the visual interface designer. Um, some of the important responsibilities include ensuring that visual representation is effectively communicating the product's behavior, conveying the brand ideals, while uh, creating a first positive, positive first impression, and proposing a visual strategy. Um, even though I don't have any actual design experience in like DMS form, I did design a website last semester for a project for the Writing in a Digital World class. Um, I did a website on Wonder Woman, the 2017 film. My major analysis was um, the gender roles in that film. And so I had to convey information that was also easy to access on the website and visually pleasing. And just like an individual designer, I had to find flaws in my design and Last semester, I also had some small graphic design experience in uh, DMS 103. There is a graphic design project um, using Adobe Illustrator, so I did that. Um, I did it on a political activist group. And so I feel those skills have helped me prepare to be a visual designer. Um, some of the most important things is um, being able to spot unnecessary inconsistencies. Um, having good at visualization skills and identifying possible flaws, which due to my website, I feel like I have a good um, handle on.
what I did like last time I taught this was like everyone wanted to be a team leader. Um, yeah, I actually uh, hit up a bunch of them. And then this time, everyone's a visual designer. I don't know what I said differently this time, but uh, <laughs> anyway, go on. Go on. Hi everyone, I'm Kai Chen Huang from Shanghai, China. Uh, the initial role I take for myself is a visual interface designer. Um, I think some traits of that is kind of similar to mine, so I take it as the initial one. Uh, firstly, the, uh, a visual interface designer ensures that the visual representation of a, the design effectively communicates the data and hints at the expected behavior of the product. At the same time, the visual designer is responsible for conveying the brand ideals in the product and for creating um, uh, like creating a positive first impression. I have done a lot of poster and logo design back to high school. I remember when a teacher asked us to design logo for our own created like small business. I was responsible for ensuring that the visual representation of um, of our design, which is a coffee machine, uh, could effectively attract customers and give a wonderful first impression. Secondly, the visual designer is usually the person best suited uh, to lead the interviews with brand stakeholders and may lead other interviews as any other team members would. Uh, as for me, I have quite a lot of interview experience so far. By interviewing a, bit, a few like businessmen, uh, teachers, and media workers, I started to have some experience of how to conduct a good interview and get useful information from uh, stakeholders. Uh, visual designers also play a less obvious but equally important role in, in reviewing the interaction design and may contribute ideas to, to it as any other team member does. Um, plus, visual designers must, of course, have good visualization and rendering skills. Uh, with an experience of calligraphy for about eight years, I qualify myself as the one who knows a little about aesthetics for, or like visual beauty. This could be an interesting part for me. And uh, one skill that even some of the best visual interface designers struggle with is icon design. Um, this requires not only a deep understanding of how humans recognize and interpret symbols, but also illustration skills. I've taken DMS 103 last semester, uh, which covered some parts of interpreting <coughs> symbols. Um, maybe this could, be, this could be helpful for me. Uh, last but not least, collaboration skills and empathy uh, are as important in visual design as in the other roles. Um, debating skill also makes me feel comfortable if confronting those problems, and I think this could help me do well as a visual interface designer eventually. Thank you. I'm sorry? Oh. No, it's hard. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get that down before the end of the semester. <laughs> And that'll come back to one. My desktop is slow to wake up. Yeah. There, yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> Um, hello everyone, my name is Yasin Khalfali. Uh, you probably won't recognize me, that was a uh, long time ago before all this started. I don't <laughs> have a recent good. professional photo. If you could uh, yes sir. Uh, first of all, I'll be covering what a visual designer is, is responsible for, then I'll shed some light on a few past personal uh, uh, professional experiences and lastly different sets of skills that I've acquired throughout the years. I mean, obviously, a visual designer is someone who is responsible for establishing the look, and the feel of various interfaces. He or she is responsible for working within brand guidelines to create layers that reinforce a brand style or voice through its visual touch points. Also de designing the actual logos, icons, and infographics. I myself believe that I'm a visual designer because I often take it upon myself to find the next innovative design 
for different companies that I've worked with uh, that are listed uh, here. I'm currently working with Zeba Apero, uh, which is a brand with the mission to build an eco-friendly company that inspires individuals through nature and facilitates a sustainable lifestyle and supports the conservation of all wild things. Through working with this brand as well as previous experiences, I learned the importance of having several sets of skills that make up the bigger picture. For example, having experience in computer science along with uh, design skills helped me accomplish goals within the scope of vision of projects that I've worked with. Lastly, a great visual designer is only, uh, is only found in great teams since I firmly believe that teamwork is more important than basic skills that can be learned overnight. Um, some of the courses that I'm taking currently is DMS 101 and DMS 104. Um, I'm currently uh, majoring in DMS. And these are the different sets of skills that I acquired throughout the years. And thank you for your attention. Okay. Yeah. I know it complains like, oh my god, you, <laughs> you pulled it out. Life is too short to Let's remove your USB uh, thumb drive yeah. responsibly or we whatever. Like to live in the edge right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, did I miss anyone? Because I don't think. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, 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 I keep, I kept on forgetting. So please, come on up. And you'll grab this. HDMI? The HDMI, yes. Thank you very much. Let's see. And then anyone else after? Oh, oh, hi, John. Didn't do you do last? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay, then John. And then anyone else after John? Okay, last but not least. Second last but not least. All right, just want to kick this off with something I've made in the past, so I can show you something I could do. So, this is the logo for my acapella group. I was just having fun, and this is among some of the things I could do. Uh, my name is Brian. I am currently a sophomore majoring in digital media studies and business, and I'm trying to minor in journalism. So, what I want to do down the road is like photojournalistic documentary work. So more video-based work, actually. But I want to draw attention first to a photo in the back. I feel the photo represents me a lot. I use it for my wallpapers all the time. It, it was taken past graduation high school. I was in Japan. So this is what I want to do. Like, I graduated high school, and this is what I want to set out to do, to travel and document things along the way. So I do a lot of video work. And to tie it all into why I want to be a visual interface designer, I care a lot about aesthetics. So I do a lot of photography and videography, and this is what I enjoy doing. Um, this will be dwelling into a bit of my skill set. I am proficient at using the Adobe Creative Suite. So as you can see, that animation was created through After Effects. I do a lot of video work. If you want aero drone photography, um, underwater footage, action, sports photography, and videography, I can also do that. Um, yeah, so yeah, I would use Photoshop and Lightroom quite consistently, and as well as Premiere Pro. So uh, this last semester, I took DMS 103, so that covered all the basics, you know, photography, videography, graphics design. And uh, it came to great use for my Entrepreneurship 2 to 3K class, which I'm about to demonstrate to you guys. This is a work demo. Uh, we had to represent and create a brand, like an ideal brand. And so like, we formed groups, and we came up with the idea to create this company called Liddy. So what Liddy does is basically, it's what any college student actually want, like to get live updates of where parties are at, how ex like, exciting parties are at, how live they're at. So I created this user interface using Illustrator. Um, so yeah, first things, creating brand ideas is what you want to be as a visual designer. Uh, we made sure it pops out. I also draw from the real world. So as you can see, the logo is elegant. It's like a little cursive bit of uh, font there, it's a little bit of typography. And I drew inspiration from Cadbury, from Lyft, and you see like the purple contrast greatly with the white. Um, so yeah, I'm very much about creating first impressions. We want to make sure this app is user-friendly, so it combines us uh, usability and desirability. Um, it's very spontaneous. We take into account like uh, real world interfaces, UIs, like map APIs, like the Snap Map interface. So I can see like the Bitmojis are incorporated within the app. And throughout the process of creating this UI interface, like I had to think about, oh, what if you press this button? You can see that it's now highlighted as being white. So it's like it's about running it through. Think uh, and like, picturing what users would actually want through the app and what they would be seeing and experiencing as they're punching each button. So I have to make sure everything is a smooth process. As you can see here, there's a rating system. Uh, everything, by the way, everything within this UI, yeah, is tailor made. I made sure everything, uh, everything was made individually, all the buttons, so I could do that. 
Um, but last but not least, I just want to make sure to bring it out to you that I'm a team player. Collaboration and empathy are a thing for me. I've led small platoons to big, uh, small units of big platoons in my scout troop, led big choirs and stuff. So I very much can gauge into what the team needs and to serve a common goal. Thank you very much. Thank you. his own adapter. Yeah. <laughs> then again, going once, twice, anyone else that we haven't hit? Okay, great. That gives me time to go over some new stuff, well, but uh, take your time now. Not that much time. No. You pretend it's there and, and just just go grab the microphone and uh, have at it when you're ready. Never wakes up. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Lacanje, and I am a sophomore. A well, dull major in English on the language media and communications track and uh, digital media studies. Today I'm going to explain to you guys what I believe my initial role should be on a design team and why I'm the perfect, why I'm perfect, I believe I'm good for the role. My intended role on the design team is to be the visual interface and information designer, or just visual designer for short. As you know, the visual designer is probably the second most important role on the team behind the team lead. If not, then definitely the most important. My job will be to make sure that the blueprints of the product effectively represents what the product itself is supposed to do upon the completion of the design. I would also be responsible for advertising the product in a positive manner in order to create a good first impression for our audience. If I'm elected as, as the visual designer for the design team that I'm elected to, I promise to fulfill the role to the best of my ability. I promise to be actively engaged during all phases of the design project and lead the interviews with people interested in our product and also I have the resume, I feel I have the resume to also be a visual designer. In my year and a half here at the University of Rochester I have taken courses that I believe have aided me tremendously. I took Psychology 101 last spring and I am currently taking Psychology 161 which helped me understand how people think in certain situations and what to say in the situations will be, which will be useful for interviews. I just took DMS 101 and DMS 103 last semester, both of which told me the fundamentals of digital media and will be useful since, since I will be responsible for overseeing most of the phases of the project. And finally, I am in two organizations on campus. I am on, I am a sports beat writer for Campus Times in which I write articles about recent sports events or, or sports features on either on a team or an, or an athlete. I'm also the secretary of the men's club basketball team in which I come up with ideas to make the club better, either by advertising or assisting the e-board, making sure the club is running smoothly. And also, I work in the uh, Lag Center as well, where I work the games, either as a broadcaster, where I work the camera or computer. So I'm pretty really good with technological things. I believe I know how to talk to people, so that's why I believe I can help with the interviews. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good try, though. All right, Teran, you can 